Before the arrival of the Europeans, historians believe that there were over 300 languages spoken by the Native Americans, which is at least 100 languages more than the number of European languages today. The Native Americans are an extremely diverse group of people with many tribes, each with its own language, culture, and social structure. During pre-colonial times, some of these tribes were peaceful, while some were aggressive. Some tribes were nomadic, but other tribes lived in large groups with structured hierarchies. Before the arrival of Europeans in North America, the Native Americans lived in a variety of different areas, terrains, and climates. Although there were a lot of differences amongst the tribes, they all lived in harmony with their environment. They were respectful towards their surroundings and were careful to only take what they needed without damaging the world around them. But where did the Native Americans come from in the first place? There are a couple of different theories. The most well-known one is the Bering Strait theory. According to this idea, there was a land bridge between Asia and North America thousands of years ago. The first people in North America were Asianic nomadic hunters following herds of animals. After the last ice age, the ocean levels rose and covered the land bridge, and the people in North America moved south to warmer climates. The Bering Strait theory has been widely accepted from around 1590 to the present day, but the Native Americans have different stories. Their history does not include a trek across a land bridge into the Americas. Some tribes have histories that date far back into history. For example, the Mohawk people have been counting winters in North America for about the last 33,000 years. And there is archaeological evidence that there have been people in North America for at least the last 15,000 years. To put it in perspective, the Great Pyramids of Egypt are less than 5,000 years old. So the Native Americans were already settled in the Americas long before the Europeans began arriving. Another popular theory is that the first people arrived in boats. They could have come from Asia and Europe in boats thousands of years ago and discovered the Americas. There is archaeological evidence that vessels landed at several different places along the coasts, allowing the Native Americans to establish themselves across the two continents. Once they were established, how did the Native Americans live? That answer depends on which tribe you want to focus on. There were many different tribes, and a mixture of culture and climate determined the way they lived. The land heavily influenced the way the Native Americans lived, so the tribes that lived near each other tended to have a lot more commonalities than with tribes that lived far away. Even though most people may picture Native Americans only living in the grasslands or the forests of North America, there were tribes who lived in every climate and region of the Americas including the Arctic and Subarctic. There were few tribes in these regions, and they tended to be nomadic, following the animals they relied upon for food, clothing, shelter, and even sculpting material. They used walrus tusks and whale bones to create tools and art. Even though they lived in a region that still appears hostile to human life today, these tribes still took the time to create art, proving that they were doing more than just surviving the Arctic. They were thriving. Although the subarctic can sustain some plant life, the growing season is short and the winters are brutal. There are a few tribes that remain stationary in the subarctic, but they took advantage of the short growing season to farm as much as possible. In the Arctic, the tribes used dog sleds to move around, but in the subarctic, they tended to use snowshoes, toboggans, and canoes to follow after animals like caribou. While following these large animals, the Native Americans lived in lightweight tents. They either made their homes underground where it was warmer during the winter, or they were part of nations that stretched farther south. The tribes farther south lived differently than the people in the Arctic regions. Along the northeastern coast, the Native Americans were excellent farmers and had adapted their cultural practices to the four changing seasons. They moved around much less than the tribes in the north. Instead, some of the people lived in four to five villages with a structured government. The tribes in the Northeast also spent time making decorated pottery and copper tools, and they traded with each other regularly. This trade usually focused on trading food items, tools, and art, and it was facilitated by the fact that the tribes in the Northeast use only two major language groups. The people living in the Southeast were even more organized than the tribes in the Northeast. The five main tribes in the area shared a common language, and they had social structures, governments, and laws that appeared very similar to the structure of European societies. Just like the northeastern tribes, the southeastern tribes were excellent farmers. They grew things like squash, beans, sunflowers, corn, and tobacco. 
The climate and soil were ideal for growing crops, so they based their society around the agrarian calendar. During the harvest season in the fall, they had an annual celebration called the Green Corn Festival, in which they cooked corn for the gods and then for everyone else. It was a night of bonfires, eating, and dancing. Although the people along the eastern coast did hunt, they were not like the excellent hunters who lived on the Great Plains. A large region south of the subarctic in North America that is mostly grassland and prairie. Many tribes lived in this vast region, and many of them were nomadic because they hunted buffalo to survive. Of course, some people were farmers, but many cultures of the tribes in the Great Plains centered around hunting buffalo. The Native Americans treated the buffalo with respect, using every single part of the animal, but they never killed more buffalo than necessary. This protected the general population of buffalo. The tribes used the bones for tools, the meat for food, and the hides to construct the teepees that later became symbolic of all Native Americans, not just the tribes living on the Great Plains. The tribes on the Great Plains interacted with the tribes of the Plateau region, which centered around the Columbia River in the west. The tribes here lived along the river, but the region was not well adapted for farming. So, unlike the tribes in the Great Plains, the people in the Plateau region were exclusively hunters and gatherers. They lived off the trout and salmon from the rivers, other animals who lived near the water, and any berries and plants that grew nearby. These tribes specialized in making good weapons, and they especially prized distance weapons like the bow and arrow, the spear, and even the lasso. Despite all of their weapons, though, the tribes in the Plateau region were peaceful with each other. They tended to live in small communities and communicated as much as possible despite any language barriers. Other parts of the Americas were even less hospitable to human life, but the Native Americans in the Great Basin managed to thrive anyway. The Great Basin is a desert area between the Rocky Mountains and the Sierra Nevada, and it offered very few opportunities for tribes to settle in one place. Instead, many of the tribes in this area were nomadic, constantly looking for optimal living space. They lived in wikiups or wigwams, which were portable homes, and they ate whatever food they could find like lizards, nuts, and seeds. To survive, the Native Americans in the Great Basin were experts of the land and were even knowledgeable about lands outside of their area. Women were treated as equal members of the tribe, and they kept the group small to make life easier to sustain. The Southwest was more forgiving than the Great Basin was, but the tribes who lived there had more differences than the tribes of other areas. This is partly because there were two main lifestyles in the Southwest. Some of the Native Americans settled in villages. They farmed for most of their food because large animals were hard to find in this area. They built houses from the ground to survive the hot summers, usually by either carving into rocks or shaping the structures from stone and adobe mud. These structures were called pueblos, and their villages centered around communal life. The other tribes were nomadic, and they tended to be more violent than the nomadic tribes from other regions. They hunted what food they could and raided villages for the rest of it which created some tension between the Native American tribes in the Southwest. This tension between tribes was not universal. Historians estimate that there were over 100 tribes in California, making this area the most densely populated in the Americas. Yet, there is little evidence that the tribes fought with each other. California was a beautiful land, and the people there were able to thrive solely off what the land provided. Even though they didn't farm, they did freely trade with each other sharing art, food, and knowledge. The people lived in small family-based groups, and they mostly preferred to live in harmony than to fight over the abundance of resources. The tribes in the Northwest had the most rigid and structured societies of all the Native Americans in North America. They hunted and gathered, and the land was bountiful, so the tribes settled into large villages that were often home to hundreds of people. They lived in longhouses made of cedar and the village chief was so powerful that he decided who lived in which longhouse. Totem poles were important to the cultures of the Northwest, often serving as family histories. But another important part of their culture was the potlatch, a ceremonial feast held in honor of life-changing events, such as a birth or a wedding. The higher up the social ladder the host was, the larger the celebration. But unlike our parties today, the host did not receive gifts from the guests. Instead, the potlatch centered around the host giving gifts to demonstrate the host's wealth and build goodwill ties. This festival was unique to the Northwestern tribes, and it shows how complex the society of the Native Americans was before the arrival of the Europeans. 
Yet despite all these different lifestyles, the Native Americans still had impressive similarities. The Native Americans spoke many different languages, but in some regions, these languages were quite similar or stemmed from a major language family. For instance, the Iroquoian languages included Mohawk and Seneca. Of course, there were as many different dialects and variations as there were tribes, and the farther apart a tribe lived from another, the less likely they would understand each other. Some Native Americans even spoke multiple languages. The Native Americans were also united in their respect for nature. Their respect even bordered on reverence sometimes. But their respect for nature was not their religion. Instead, they believed that they were a part of the land, and it wasn't theirs to tame or control. So they did everything possible to avoid abusing the world around them. They were thankful for what the land did provide, and used ceremonies and festivals to express their gratitude. Everything changed when the Europeans arrived, but the Native Americans lived at peace with the land before they did. They had complex social structures and interactions with each other, even if they didn't always get along. Art was essential to tribal culture, and women were often treated as equals. And the Native Americans lived rich lives in the years before the Europeans arrived, showing that there is still much that we can learn about living a good life from the Native Americans. To learn more about the Native Americans, check out our book, Native Americans, a captivating guide to Native American history and the Trail of Tears, including tribes such as the Cherokee, Muskegee Creek, Seminole, Chickasaw, and Choctaw Nations. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.